Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman for Adapt Your Life and Ask Adapt. Today's episode is on neurologic conditions and psychiatric conditions. Because when you think about it, they both affect the brain. And uh, so there's really an artificial distinction between the two. Uh, you know, for years, we've known that a keto diet can help epilepsy. In fact, that's one of the earliest uses of a ketogenic diet was for the treatment of childhood epilepsy. It still is being used today in worldwide centers, but it's a different diet than the keto diet for diabetes and for obesity uh, because you uh, have to be stricter about the nutrient composition, the ratios, the macros, and it's caused some confusion in today's popular um, uh, implementation of a keto diet. You don't have to be as strict as you would be for a ketogenic diet for epilepsy if you're just trying to lose weight or fix your diabetes or be generally healthy. But for so for a long time we've known that changing the food can affect the brain. It can actually stop seizures in some children who are um, unable to transport glucose into the brain. So if you turn the fuel source to ketones and and by doing that, uh, you're actually stopping seizures in these susceptible people, children. Um, so what about other more, uh, more common problems and um, neurologic diseases like Parkinson's? Uh, there's actually pretty good evidence, uh, at least in the short term. Uh, I've seen some data and it's emerging. Um, there are meetings now that are taking place sharing the science. So of course, now you can watch internet YouTube videos of these meetings or of the scientists themselves. So I've seen uh, the Parkinsonian tremor. This is a Parkinson's uh, often can give you sort of a, a resting tremor. Um, and that can be temporarily alleviated, temporarily um, reduced by drinking ketones. So that's one of these uses that is, uh, you know, caused some popular uh, uh, attention, but the science is just being done, so we don't quite know how to apply these new ways of drinking or eating or uh, ketones. When you don't eat carbohydrates and you do a keto diet, you're basically creating those ketones internally without having to take some sort of ketone supplement. So I'm very interested in seeing the latest research on neurologic diseases uh, and psychiatric diseases uh, in the upcoming months uh, at the conferences. Um, in my experience, we published a case study of the use of a ketogenic diet to treat schizophrenia. And uh, there are now several other reports that uh, if you do a carbohydrate restricted ketogenic diet, you might get improvement in severe psychiatric conditions, severe mental health disorders like uh, schizophrenia, bipolar. These are anecdotes and uh, I just met with a psychiatrist from Harvard over the weekend. So it's, you know, this is um, January 2019 and more and more experience, uh, you may have more of a uh, side effects the first few days if you're on medications. And so again, we're learning there are times when you have to do this with a medical professional who understands the diet, and there are times when you can do it on your own. If you have a serious medical problem like Parkinson's, schizophrenia, bipolar, be sure you do this with someone who understands how to do it. Uh, so Ariana asks, uh, are there stories of schizophrenics who become fat adapted and saw improvement? Yes. Um, although it's a, a small number, that's very exciting. You know, can you imagine uh, helping or, or fixing a devastating disease like schizophrenia just by changing the food? It, you know, so, but um, can I endorse it with a, the confidence of fixing diabetes? No, uh, it's not at that level yet. Um, still the research level. Uh, does keto help with depression or anxiety? Yes, I think um, it will affect those things, um, sometimes in a positive way. Um, I wouldn't say it's uniformly positive. In my experience, um, in a clinical population with lots of diseases, uh, it doesn't always improve, but it's worth a shot. Um, can it help with Alzheimer's? Well, there's a lot of interest about Alzheimer's. It's being called diabetes type 3. 
Um, is it a, a glucose and insulin issue? Yes. Um, the problem, my understanding is the problem is once you get a symptom of Alzheimer's, it's very late in the disorder, late in the disease, and it may be difficult to fix. So targeting minimal cognitive dysfunction or, or early Alzheimer's, or you know, when you start getting memory difficulties, uh, that may be the time uh, where this might be helpful. You know, I'm at that um, level where I will help anyone do a keto diet. I, I think it's just healthy eating. And with monitoring of the medical conditions with someone who understands the, the power of this approach, um, I will help anyone do it, but I won't say that it's necessarily going to help. So for Alzheimer's, I'd say it's still kind of far off uh, and don't expect huge results when uh, symptoms have already begun. Um, Larry asks, are there any neurologic conditions that do not suit a keto protocol? And I would say I, I don't know of any. Um, Beverly, any success for Parkinson's following low carb? Again, it, it's really early. Um, we're at that stage where uh, I would recommend if you have a disorder, check out Facebook for keto and whatever. Uh, and what we're finding is that people are getting together and sharing their results. Um, and then the academics like me have gone in and done surveys of those groups to help inform the uh, uh, more uh, basic scientists about what's happening clinically. So um, in summary, there's no question that changing the diet can be helpful for brain disorders, neurologic and psychiatric conditions, and uh, some improvements um, have been seen in small numbers of people, which means it, it may or may not apply to more and more uh, people, but it's pretty exciting to see the science being done now. I'm Dr. Eric Westman for Adapt Your Life and be sure to subscribe and leave your comments below. Till the next time.